In this video, we are going to cover how to start in astrophotography with just the basic camera and kit lens. We are going to take a picture that looks like this and turn it into this just by adjusting our camera settings. Stick around and I hope you enjoy. What's up everybody? Today we're going to talk about it. Backyard astrophotography. We're going to take our standard camera with a kit lens. I have the Canon Rebel EOS T6i with the 18 to 55 kit lens. And I'm going to show you how we can take some halfway decent photos of the stars with it. Since we're using a Rebel series with a crop sensor in there, we have to figure out our actual focal length, not use the numbers that show up on there. Since this is an 18 to 55, we're going to do it zoomed in as far as we can go at 55. Now it has a crop factor of 1.6 so our actual focal length is an 88 millimeter. Now that is important to figure out how long of an exposure we can take without making star trails. So we use the 500 rule. The 500 divided by whatever our focal length is is the amount of seconds you can take a still image of the stars without having star trails. So being an 88 millimeter focal length divided by the 500 rule we can shoot for 5.6 seconds so basically we can do a five second exposure so now that we know how long we can take the picture for we have to figure out the best settings for the lens of course this is not a great lens so it will not take very beautiful pictures but they are definitely usable pictures so for our camera settings we're going to shoot in manual mode. We want everything to be controlled manually. We don't want the camera making any decisions for us. So once we're in manual mode, we'll go to our first setting, which will be the aperture. Now the minimum aperture on the kit lens is 5.6, but it is awfully soft picture. So I would experiment anywhere between a 5.6 and an f8. f8 is where I prefer to shoot with this lens. It gives the sharpest picture you can get. Now we know our shutter speed is going to be five second exposure. One thing you'll want to do is set up a delayed shot. So instead of pushing the button, use your self timer so the shape can get out of the camera and the tripod and everything can be still and then I'll take the photo. So we're going to turn that on right now to shoot with a two second timer delay. So now when I take a photo, you'll see on here, the light comes on, waits two seconds, and then it takes its five second shot. Now as far as image quality, shoot raw if you wanna do after post-processing, if especially if you're going to end up stacking pictures, but if you're just doing a single exposure and you don't know how to post-process in Lightroom or Photoshop or whatever, just use, shoot them JPEG and RAW and then you can have the option later. So now we have our f-stop set, our shutter speed set. Now the next one is the ISO. Higher the ISO, possibly more noise you're going to introduce into your picture. But since we have such a short exposure time, of five seconds we want to get as much light information as we can receive on that sensor so raising the ISO is almost necessary it also depends on your amount of light pollution if you have too much light pollution you will just have a blown out looking picture that you can fix somewhat afterwards we'll talk about that in another video so that is going to be your deciding factor on how much light you can receive because we know we can't shoot any lower than 5.6. We can't take any exposure longer than five seconds. That leaves us with the ISO to be able to make our adjustment for the amount of light that we can gather. All right, let's talk about focusing. We're gonna to have to use manual focusing only. If you do automatic, you'll never get focused on the star. Now the easiest way to do that is once you have it switched in the manual focus, use your live view. And in live view, you can zoom in on a bright star, not necessarily which one you're going to take a picture of or the area you're going to take a picture of, but it'll be easier to focus on a brighter object. So we'll go into live view. 
then we'll zoom all the way in on our screen to the 10 time magnification then you can manually adjust your focus on that star to get it as sharp as possible depending on your f-stop if you're at 5.6 or f8 or anywhere in between it's going to change how sharp you're going to be able to get it like I said I prefer f8 it doesn't gather as much light but you definitely get a sharper okay so now we have our focus set recompose our camera to the area of the sky that we're going to shoot now let's take a couple test shots to figure out where our best ISO setting is to do that we're going to use our histogram to see the actual data of the picture not just what it looks like on the screen because you can't trust the back of the screen you're going to want it in the middle your exposure in the middle of the histogram as much as possible without clipping on your right edge or your left edge to do that we'll just take a few test shots at different ISOs and see which one ends up looking the best okay now that we've snapped a few test shots and we've seen what the ISO changes on the histogram let's discuss what makes it a good exposure as opposed to a bad exposure All right, so there you have it. We've discussed how to do your very basic, simple astrophotography with your kit lens. No fancy modifications to the camera with just your basic tripod. Um, hope you learned something. Hope you got something. Stick around for the next video in this series. We're going to discuss how to do a special mount so we can get longer exposure times. I'm still on the kit lens. The 18 to 55, I'm at the all the way zoomed in at 55. I'm going to be doing shots at F8. Yeah.